Maps Hit. That's the free workout we're going to give away today. So Maps Hit, great workout program, short workouts, rapid fat loss in a short period of time. Very intense, but done properly. Here's how you can enter to win that program. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Leave, uh, Make sure you subscribe to this channel and turn on your notifications. Got to do all those things. If we pick your comment, we'll notify you and you'll get free access to Maps Hit. By the way, you're going to love today's episode. If you're limited on time, if you have like 30 minutes or less to work out and you're worried about, am I going to make gains? Is it even worth it? It is worth it. We highlight today how you can make short workouts extremely effective. Speaking of workouts, we are running a sale all month long on two workout programs. Maps Hit, which I just talked about, is 50% off. And then Maps Split. This is our traditional bodybuilding body part split routine. This is a six-day week routine. It's advanced. So for those of you that have a lot of experience, want to build a lot of muscle or shape and sculpt your body, great program. They're both 50% off. So if you're interested, head over to mapsfitnessproducts.com and then use this code DEC50. So DEC50 will give you 50% off both of those programs. All right, here comes the show. Hey guys, I already know the answer to this, but I'm going to ask anyway. What's the number one thing that gets in people's way, or at least what they say gets in their way when it comes to being able to work out consistently? One is time, two is money. Yeah, yeah. It's time, time, right? Every yeah. time. It's always time. Like t Time is a big issue. And you know what's funny is that um, although we have a lot of time-saving devices, I've actually read some studies showing that we just fill our days more than ever before. We schedule everything, mm -hmm. um, including play dates, which is funny. You know, when I was a kid, it wasn't a play date. You just played with your friends. No, you just hung out. Yeah. Yeah. yeah now we have to call it something. But time is what always gets in people's way. And what happens with that is they feel like they don't have enough time. They've got other priorities. Or they feel like, if I can't do this one-hour workout, I only have 30 minutes or I only have 25 minutes why would I waste my time, you know, doing anything at all? It's it's not going to be worth it. So I'm just not going to work out at all. Well, this yeah. will be a, a good discussion because we just we just had a live caller uh, the other day that called in, and I think I think he was a trainer, right? He was a yeah, trainer. Yeah, he was a trainer. Mm. And he was asking a, a question because he worked in a facility that they it was like a big box gym, and management management there uh, does didn't allow hour sessions. And I know actually I remember I don't know if you guys knew this or not, but. 24 hour fitness on my way out, they were contemplating this. They were considering uh, trying to go to only half hour sessions. Yeah. So there's a lot of companies that have done this. And so he was asking us like, you know, I've only got 30 minutes, you know, how, how would you guys program for that? And when he asked that question, I'm like, you know what, we have talked about this, but it was a long time ago we went into this because I remember when the company, when when I was working for 24, they transitioned into and they had 30-minute sessions as an option. And as a uh, fitness manager, I had to help my trainers not only like sell those and figure out how would you present that to somebody, and then also how would you train that and what is the most effective per client. And I think that our answer is... Um, is pretty unique. I don't think that I, I haven't heard anybody else talk. Most people go to the easy default, which is doing some sort of a circuit base, which there's some value there, right? Sure. Of, of doing that. But I think that's kind of the generic answer. And I've had more success uh, doing different things. There's, than just there's that. a lot of ways to make 30 minute workouts uh, truly impactful. Effective. Yeah. And before we get into them, I do want to say this, because I actually fell into this as a trainer myself. When I would get potential clients who would say to me, you know, Sal, it's, time is really challenging for me. I can't be here for longer than 30 minutes. I would always default to this like motivational speech in which, you know, we all have the same 24 <laughs> hours in a day. So guilty of this. Yeah. And, you know, it's it's how you make, you have to make the time that doesn't just appear. You got to prioritize You're it. You're just then, being lazy is yeah. like basically what it amounts to. Exactly. And, and, and if you, you know, if you devote more time to fitness, you'll yeah. actually find more time because you're more effective and efficient at work and you'll be a better mom or a better dad and a better partner. All true. Yeah. But here's the problem. That strategy fails. Doesn't stick. If you, if you go, if you know that time is an issue for you and you're saying, well, I just got to make the time and now you're hyper motivated. The odds are you probably won't stick to your new routine. What you need to do, what's more effective, is to work within the time frame that you have, make that effective, and then what tends to happen naturally is because you find it effective, because it's working for you, then you start to naturally want to find more time, and it sticks. That's yeah. the big thing. So yeah. I wanted to say that first because 
I know some people watching are like, well, just, you know, find a way to make an hour work for you. That doesn't always work. And, and if you do it within that wrong context of I'm just getting started and I'm in this motivated state of mind, which doesn't always last, it'll fail uh, long term. So, you know, remember that. Is what I, I mean, is it, yeah. isn't it like that for almost everything? Right. Like if you think totally. like if you're trying to introduce someone to a new type of food mm -hmm. or an interest in, and then watching a sport or get them get them to. I mean, you're basically essentially trying to to close them on your ideas as a trainer. Yeah, I want mm -hmm. my ideal is I want this client to be in here at least three to four times a week for an hour at a time. But I'm being told that they only have 30 minutes. And so I can either try to force that down their throat or I can give them extremely valuable stuff within that totally you know constraint and then hopefully that sells them on why they want to spend more time. Oh, that's the young does. trainer you know that's the that's the mentality is like well you're not doing it right so we need you to do all these things that are outside of what you're currently doing instead of trying to work in how they're currently doing things and you know it's so much more successful because then it's not like this big leap that they have to take uh out of their their daily routine to to make it work for them and it doesn't have to be an all or nothing approach and I think that so many people out there, they think that's the only way I can get into fitness. I can get yes. into the gym is if I abandon all of my bad habits right now and I just completely steer the boat in this direction. No, all or none mentality is, is a poor long-term strategy. It has very little stick. It's almost never sustainable. It's not all or nothing. And the truth is this, something, so long as it's done appropriately, right? But something is always better than nothing. So if you do a little bit and you're comparing that little bit, all things being equal to doing nothing, that little bit is better. So something's always better than nothing. And that's an important thing uh, to understand. Now, I fell into this myself. You know, I would have this rigid idea of what my workout needed to look like. And it had to last, you know, an hour and 15 minutes. And it had to include the following things. And here's the volume, here's the sets, and here's the exercises. And then... Uh, I had kids, you know, and then, you know, we, you own a business mm -hmm. and it's, and it doesn't always work that way. So what, what was I supposed to do? Stop? Yeah. Well, no, you start to figure things out a little bit. In fact, I did that this morning, right? So this is the week that I, I have my two older kids with me and, you know, every other week they'll, they're with their mom and, and every other week they're with me. And the, the weeks that they're with me, I take them to school, which means I get here at about 8.05 if I'm lucky, if I beat traffic and all that stuff. And then I might have about 45 minutes to work out. Today, I had 25 minutes because we had a meeting at 8.30. So I was going to have to fit a, you know, almost hour-long workout in 25 minutes. Okay, what do I do? Well, I modified it. So mm -hmm. what did I do? Personally, as I dropped the volume way down, I jacked up the intensity. And the novelty was actually phenomenal. And the, fa the fact that I've been doing this actually now for a little while, I'm actually gaining value from doing different things because I have this time constraint. And that's, I think one of the big lessons of what we're going to talk about is not only is it, it, not only is it not a poor substitute. In other words, if you only have 30 minutes, you might think to yourself, well, it's, you know, it's better than nothing, which is true. Or, oh, it's, you know, it's, I could do so much better, but this is what I have to work with. Uh, in some cases that's true, but in other cases, especially for people who sometimes have full hours, but other times don't, you can find ways to make those short workouts novel and do things for your body that you may not normally do and actually get better results. Yeah. Why do you, why do you think this is such a popular messaging from young trainers? I mean, I remember when uh, Danny Mentrego was, was working with us and I remember a conversation, you sitting him down and trying to explain this. A very, very smart kid. Kid has more national certifications than I think all of us. Um, a really, really uh, smart dude. Knows his stuff, uh, but young, right? And just not as experienced. And I know that he was giving messaging like that. I remember you sitting him down yeah. and trying to explain to him, what do you think it is that, because it's not like a lack of uh, information. I mean, mm -hmm. you're talking about a really smart kid who's giving that messaging. What do you think it is? Why do you think that we, the trainers, including ourselves, gravitated towards that messaging, that trying to push yeah. you to commit to more time? Because it almost seems obvious what we're saying right now is like, yeah, mm -hmm. if you shove something down someone's throat or make them feel guilty for not doing it, do you think it's because they get a a temporary response that is positive, like where people, okay, they submit and they give in? Do you think it's the trainer doesn't think they can provide enough value to make a significant enough change in that person in 30 minutes so that they will re-sign with them? What do you, what, what's perpetuating it in yeah, our space? I can tell you what it was for me. Uh, for me, it was, I had the answer. Mm -hmm. So here's the solution. 
And I know what'll happen if you just do what I tell you. And I'm going to save your life and I'm going to do all these awesome things. Yeah, it's so, about you. Yes, yes. And so my Too goal much. was, my goal was, let me motivate and inspire this person to mm -hmm. do everything, to do, to follow my answer. But what it does is it completely ignores human behavior. It completely ignores the lack of sustainability that happens from that particular strategy. And so because of those things, it's actually a failing approach. So it is true if you do everything I tell you, you'll get better results, Yeah, but then you won't stick to it and it's not going to work. Is that what you think, Justin? Is well, what... I, I just think that uh, it's lack of experience at the end of the day because you haven't seen how the, that method plays out all the way. And, and you're not going to be able to see that until you get enough people in front of you where you've tried over and over again with this approach because it makes sense. If you change yep. your behaviors, you will get results. If you do this, you know, the earlier you do this, the better. Yeah. Uh, but and, and so that's something that you get really passionate about it and you're almost like this new uh evangelist because you've learned all these uh cool um you know hacks and things that you can apply uh that will really make a massive difference uh on yourself or you know you've read about all these uh you know health and fitness uh you you've gotten like the education behind it uh to back up like what you're trying to say but in terms of it playing out and watching human behavior and how they receive it uh that takes a lot of interaction between your clients that you need uh, experience for. Yeah. So how how think, long did it take you guys to figure this out? I know I'm trying way? to I'm trying to actually unpack that and and remember where where it was where that light bulb went off for me. And maybe that's what it is is that I didn't have a large enough test group at the beginning, right? Because initially the people that you tell to do this and they don't do it, they don't get the results. Yeah. You know they don't they don't see and the ones that actually follow you and do what you tell them to do. They yeah. get the most results, but I think it, it's like over time, maybe over years of realizing like, oh, wow, how many people did I turn off because it was an all or nothing with me? It was like either you got to commit to three days a week for an hour or I can't help you or you're not going to see the results. And so, so I turned like off two out of like 20, right? right? Something like that. That I mean, actually do it that and commit actually, to it. You get like massive success or you just, you feel like, and, and I think you, you go back and you look at that and you look at those 20 people and you're like, wait a minute. Why didn't I make that impact with these people? Like, what can I do better? And once you really start like asking yourself that question, I think it leads you back. It into took that me. Direction. It took me years, dude. Yeah, it, I was probably I, five years. At probably. Least, yeah. I, I remember. I don't remember specifically, but I remember having conversations. I don't remember who it was, but we had this conversation about like how how successful are you as a trainer? I'm like, oh, I'm super successful. My clients get results. Like, well, how many of them that don't work with you have kept these results? And then I had this real honest like reflection. Like, oh my gosh, like. If they stop working with me, that's it. They stop working out. Yeah. So I, I'm not really actually very effective at all. It's not working. Mm -hmm. It works in the short term, but it doesn't work uh, in the long term. And then when I started changing my approach, what I noticed was I had way more stick with results. People started with what they what they thought they could work with, which was fine. And they would slowly start to get results and then they'd like it. And then they themselves would work out more and make more time. And even if they didn't, what I didn't do was blow them out of the water and say, hey, if you're not going to do everything I tell you, then you might as well not waste your time, which I did early on. I was that kind of trainer early on. Like, well, you don't so do what it's funny. You. you end up helping the people that probably would have figured it out no matter what anyways. <laughs> totally. When you think about it, like when with that method and, and that that thought process, the people that you truly end up helping that, that go, okay, yes, Adam, I'll commit to the three day, five day a week, one hour. Those people probably would have figured it out on their own or eventually got to their, their goal, no matter what, with or without your help. And really all the ones that you turned off because they, they wouldn't commit to that, or you couldn't meet them where they were currently at. Those are all the real people that needed your guidance and help. And you completely lost them because you had this kind of ultimatum. You know what the irony is? I, I'd love your guys' uh, feedback on this, but for me, when I started to figure this out and, I, and I'd say, okay, cool, we have 30 minutes. So I got to get more creative. I have to figure out how to really make this effective. I became a way better trainer. Mm -hmm. I found so much value in short workouts by applying a few different techniques and focuses mm -hmm. that it actually made those workouts extremely valuable. It wasn't, no, it was no longer a poor substitute, but rather just a different type of workout. Did you guys yeah. go through something similar? Oh yeah. I, I like putting constraints like that a lot of times because it forces you to be more effective and like you really have to evaluate each one of those exercises or each one of those methods as like, is this really going to move the needle or am I just like having them sweat and, you know, raise their heart rate uh, through this, this uh, workout? Are they learning anything? Yeah. Um, there's, there's lots of factors there, but like it, it really just forces you to condense all of your information into like, what's the most effective thing that you, I can do right now. 
Well, I, I think it came together for me, which is the the first one that we were going to cover is when I started to to realize that if I could take a single exercise, like a, a major compound lift, like a squat or a deadlift or an overhead press, and I could take somebody who couldn't really do it, like just their form was breaking down, they had all kinds of postural deviations and they sucked at the movement. And if I could get them to master that one big movement, I saw these huge gains from that. I saw muscle being put on. I saw body fat being burned. I felt pain going away for them. So when I started to realize like, holy shit, I could do this crazy workout with all these different exercises and push them for an entire hour. And sure, they leave sweating and like, oh, that was hard. Or I could take this one person who all we did was like hyper-focus on like one major movement. And over time, I improved that. The carryover for that, I think I saw how beneficial that was. And it started to make me really evaluate those 50 minute hour sessions. Like, what am I really doing in there? Yeah. That's truly moving Dude, the needle. I figured this out for my, myself first, believe it or not, because uh, I would want to get like a specific lift to improve like a bench press. Mm -hmm. And I'd say, okay, I have 30 minutes. I'm only going to focus on the bench press or there would be two lifts, right? Okay. I'm only going to focus on the deadlift and the overhead press. And so I do lots of sets, watch my form and my technique. Some, uh, some of the, the sets were fast. Some of them were slow. Some of them were heavy. Some of them I'm focusing on the extension or the isometric contraction at the bottom. And so I started doing these workouts for myself and my lifts were exploding. Mm -hmm. So I do a 30 minute like deadlift and overhead press workout or bench press workout alone. Then I started doing it with clients, like you said, and it was incredible. And by the way, the clients got, they loved it. They would come in and, I, and okay, we got 30 minutes. I was the reverse, dude. It mm. was, I, I, it's not that long ago. Um, matter of fact, maybe right before we started this podcast years ago, uh, where I started to piece that together. I used to be an all or nothing. I used to fall off the diet, fall off the train. If I did not have that four day a week, one hour at a time committed, and I wasn't dialed in, I was like, oh, it's a waste of time. That was like my mentality, even as a trainer. Mm -hmm. it was, at, And yet I was coaching clients this way. It wasn't until I started to apply it myself. Did it really all come for, full circle? Because then I started, and I've talked about this on the podcast before, where sometimes I'm I'm in it, on a kick. You do like this, this all the time. All the time. I'm in that kind of mode right now where I'll just do one lift and I'll spend the entire time on just that. And it's amazing to me how much I can still kind of maintain my physique just from that that one exercise in a workout, which I would have never done in my 20s. Now think of how much the average person would would gain value from practicing a compound lift or compact a complex lift for 30 minutes. Oh yeah. I mean, there's, there's so many nuances to it that uh, you just improve. You, you, you get more effective. You get better at just that one lift, which then, and, and it, and you pick these types of lifts because they're so impactful. Like they, yes. they, they really do a great job of building muscle and getting you strong and to get better at it. Uh, you know, you, you see that now, how that translates when you go back to working out and you have more time. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. My favorite exercises for this are of course, your traditional bench press, overhead press, row squat. I also like pull-ups for this. I also like, I've done a 30 minute pull-up workout, which is phenomenal. Dips are a great exercise for this. Turkish get-ups uh, for just overall function for 30 minutes is exceptional. Sled work for 30 minutes. Like all you do is you grab a sled and you drive it or you pull it for 30 minutes. Excellent, you know, uh, workout, right? Those are some of the, my favorite. Do you guys have any others that you can think of that you like to do? I've done circus press for 30 minutes. I mean, you just hit a, a lot of the big ones. I mean, yeah. anything, any compound movement is going to have a tremendous benefit because you, you're incorporating so many muscles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we think we do, you see trainers do all these, like, you know, get on a machine and do a, a, a tricep push down or a dip machine, or they have all these isolation exercises where you get minimal benefit to it, where a single exercise that maybe like the squat, sure, it, it's primarily quads and glutes, but hamstrings are involved, calves are involved, mm -hmm. like your upper back is involved, like your forearms and gripping. Is, like there's so much that's involved in that movement that you get muscle benefit all over the, the body instead of just in one local area. Totally. Now, the next one I think is the obvious one. I think this is the 30-minute the workout button that people tend to hammer which is high intensity interval training. Now, HIT training can be very valuable. It just needs to be done properly. But HIT training done properly, 30 minutes is plenty of time. In mm -hmm. fact, 20 minutes is plenty of time when you're doing really effective HIT training. And the way I like to do it, and has to, you have to have good programming, is I'll put four, maybe five exercises together and I'll do each one until my form starts to break down. I'll rest long enough so I can compose myself to do the next exercise 
with decent form until that breaks down. I'll do a cycle. Then I'll rest long enough till I can repeat the cycle. Mm -hmm. This is not easy. Now, some of my favorite ways of doing this are I'll grab two pairs of dumbbells or one barbell with weight on it. And then all the exercise I do are with that one particular weight or those two particular dumbbells. It saves a lot of time. And again, you get phenomenal, you know, results doing this. Yeah. See, I like I like this because I can address it. Like I'm doing a strength workout, but I'm now I'm just cutting the rest. And so, like you said, though, the, the biggest thing is to make sure that my form and everything doesn't degrade. That's when I stop. That's when I stop and and I compose myself and then I I come back and I approach the next exercise. But you know, in terms of condensing time way down, it's so uh, eff effective and efficient and you get like a very, uh, you know, a very good workout uh, just from uh, cutting it down in half like that, but really just focusing on, you know, the mechanics and making sure everything is in good form. This is, this is actually my least favorite of all the ones we're talking about, although it's probably the most popular and arguably one of the most effective, but it's, it's one of the most abused probably. It is. Yeah. And that's the reason why I'm even cautious just about talking well, about intense. it today as a, a way to, you know, because obviously this the episode is going to attract people who are like, oh my God, that's me. I only have 30 minutes or I only have this much time. And then you can we could break down all the benefits of it as far as burning body fat and, and, and building muscle. And we know how great and effective it can be. But with anything mm -hmm. like that, you also have the other side, uh, which it can be easily abused or done improperly. Yeah. So I'm very careful on who I, I suggest this to. Also keep in mind, like we're going to go over like five or six of these different examples. You don't have to just choose one. No, in fact, you're yeah. better off not choosing yeah. this one. Yeah, in, in, in a perfect world, we blend these together. Like I would love to have a client who's only three days a week, 30 minutes at a time. And one session, I might just focus all on squat and overhead press. That's their whole 30 minutes or those two movements on Monday. And then Wednesday they come in and we hit like a hit circuit. Yes. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And then on Friday we go back to another single or another compound movement or two for the entire 30 totally. minutes. So in, in a perfect world, if I only have 30 minutes, I'm actually going to blend almost every one of these things that we're going to go over today. And hit is one of the ones that will be attracted by most people and people will gravitate to that being their main one. But I would caution you and say, I would utilize all the ones we're going to go over today. Yeah. I'm glad you said that. Well, and too, I just think in, in terms of, of hit, a lot of people think of just jumping and, and think of just <laughs> the plyometric portion of it and uh, you know, doing stuff that's just going to make point. you sweat. And so I think that uh, focusing it a little bit more on dumbbells or barbells or weights and like doing strength type exercises, but, you know, being really focused on form with that. It's a totally different experience. Yeah. In fact, the, the MAPS HIT program that we have, I think the most advanced, because it was three levels, beginner, intermediate, advanced. I believe the advanced is like 25 minutes, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. It's all under 30 minutes and it's it can be very, very challenging. Yeah. And of course, it's HIT training dumbbells. It's for properly. more of an advanced yeah. Yeah, lifter. Glad you brought that up too, because that just reminded me. Another mistake that people make with HIT is... If you train traditionally and then you switch over to like a hit style, uh, a lot of people don't know how to adjust the weight properly because when you are you go way down, yes, when you increase the intensity by that much, um, you have to, and it's hard, especially for my guys that are listening that uh, you're now it's transitioning. Ego check. Yeah, it's like if you're used to you know barbell bench pressing two twenty five. Uh, it's real hard to tell someone to put 90 pounds, you know, and, mm -hmm. and go do that on the, on the barbell. I'd say room. you cut the weight at least in half. Yeah. It, that's why I said yeah. that, you know, at least in half or more. I mean, I think I just did this not that long ago. We talked about uh GVT training and I was like, Oh, I haven't done that in a long time. And <laughs> talking about bench, I was like, you know, it's, by the way, it's like 10 sets of 10, right? It's not yeah. like a, a crazy circuit where you're doing a ton of work. But just that much volume on the single exercise with pretty short rest periods in between, I was blown away by how much I had to reduce the weight. So, and I can comfortably work out with 225 on bench. And I had to drop down to 35 pounds on each side, yeah. you know, which was very humbling even for me to do that. Like it took me a long time to get beyond and never look back past 45s. Like, so thank God we got those plates that are all the same size. Yeah, yeah, that no looks like, yeah look like the same for <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah. It's just, it's just a little bit better. But yeah, so no, so no, like when you're doing hit um, and, the, you know, these circuit type base, you, you have to be, very um, uh, mindful of form and technique. And in order to do that, reducing the weight, and I always encourage people to go way, like at least 50% or less at first. You can always scale up later on. You can always add more weight later on. Totally. Now, there's a, there's a, mis there's a big myth surrounding short workouts, these 30-minute workouts, that, yeah, they work for the average person. It's better than nothing. But I want to build a lot of muscle. I'm advanced. Like, this is going to be a total waste of time. 
here's the, the funny thing about that. Uh, number one, some of the most winningest bodybuilders of all time trained within this time limit. Uh, not Believe it or not, not because they were constrained by the time limit, but rather they figured out a way to work out. It was so effective, but so intense that more than 30 minutes wasn't even beneficial. So Mike Menser is, is one example. He created what's called heavy duty type training. And what he did is he dramatically reduced the volume of his workouts and would just increase the intensity. So rather than, mm. you know, doing nine sets or 15 sets for chest, he would do two or three sets, but to failure, maybe throw in some partials, right? Mm. Dornian Yates, six-time Mr. Olympia, his workouts didn't last longer than 45 minutes, sometimes and often less than 30 minutes, but he wasn't doing, you know, let's say the average bodybuilder was doing four exercises and they're doing five sets of each exercise for 20 sets. Dorian Yates was still doing four exercises, but it was one set to all out failure for each. Isn't exercise. it Arnold who's who famously said that he could come in and do one set or one exercise that's more effective than someone's entire workout? Didn't you say that? Before? I don't know if it was. Ar I don't know if Arnold said that. I mean, Arnold was very big on the volume. And by the way, there's there's value in volume too, and value. And but my my point with this is that if you never train this way, yeah. If you train, if you're an hour long workout person and you do lots of volume and sets and angles. Try instead of this, try instead of doing multiple sets of multiple exercises, do one set to failure. And if you're advanced, maybe a little bit beyond failure, maybe have a spotter give you a forced rep or do a couple partial reps at the end or rest pause where you actually rack it, rest for 10 seconds, try another rep or two. You'll only need one set to, to you know, equal what you did before with three or four sets. And it's such a short period. I did this 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 is this is one of the workouts I did. So give this me morning. an example of what that looks like protocol wise. So that does that mean there is no warming up whatsoever? So you let's say I don't know if you did bench press today or not, but let's say you did bench press. Mm -hmm. um, you know, give me an idea of one what kind of weight you normally move in a workout, and then two what does setting the bar look up look like, and what does that one set look so like? So let's say I'm going to do upper body. So we won't even save the entire upper body, right? So I'll come in and let's say the first exercise I'm going to do is bench press. I'll do a warm up set of bench press or two until I feel like I'm ready to go. Okay. Then one my, really, really light. Like yeah, really light. And I feel like I'm ready to go. Then I'll load it up and let's just say I put 225 on and then I'll go to failure, you know, maybe 12 reps. And then maybe I'll try like a half rep at the end or a rest pause rep or two. That's it for bench. But now I'm fully warmed up with chest. Mm -hmm. Now the next exercise is flies. I go to failure, one set with flies. Oh, so you are still staying in the same muscle group. You're not moving to another no, muscle group. No, then, and then I'll go to back. Now I'm ready to do my back. I'll do one warm-up set. Now I'm ready to go. Failure on pull-ups. Then when I'm ready for my barbell row, failure on barbell rows. Now by this point, my shoulders, biceps, and triceps are all pretty damn warm. Yeah. So now I can jump right into a set of failure to overhead press, a set of failure for rear flies, then biceps and triceps. Pick your bicep and tricep exercise do the same thing. Okay. 30 minutes, I worked out my entire upper body, very high intensity, very low volume. Now, this isn't something that you can do indefinitely, so you, yeah. you can't just do your work. By the way, like what Adam said earlier, you want to mix and match what we're talking about. But this is one way to do like a bodybuilding style workout in a very short period of time. Well, those are your two variables, right? You have volume or intensity and you can crank one up like substantially or the other. And that's that's a good way to then reduce the time length uh, to really make a big impact on the body. Totally. Now, I have a, a pretty good idea of why you did this, but I want you to explain to the audience so they understand because you, uh, you quickly went over that. For the chest and the back, you you picked two exercises that you did, and then for like arms, you're doing or shoulders or other things, you're only doing one. No, well, shoulders I did two, biceps okay. and triceps just one. Okay, yeah, because I mean, you're getting some bicep. And, I mean, when I'm right. going to fail, you're that's why I wanted you to point that out. Pull -ups, yes, right. So you you chose to do, you know, two two big exercises for the big muscle groups like the chest, the back, the shoulders. Yes, and then for buys and tries, which are all involved in every pushing and pulling movement that Absolutely. you do. You're getting those anyways over there, so there's no need for you to do two exercises on that. Also, yeah, because when you fail with a you know a pull up, it's your back fails, but so is your biceps. Yeah, right. So you're getting a set somewhat for biceps as well. And if that. you were to train this way, let's say for a couple of weeks, you would recommend sounds like a upper body Monday, lower body Wednesday, upper body Monday, lower body Monday, and then you yeah. alternate back or Friday. Yes, yeah, so you could do me. it that way, or you could do, let's say if you did a three day a week routine and you want to hit each body part, maybe once in that week, which is more heavy duty, it's a little even less frequency. It would be like chest, shoulders, triceps, back biceps and legs and abs maybe. And then you're set. So Monday, Wednesday, Friday. But you could do the split however you want. I think you probably want to stick to no more than maybe four body parts. Yeah. Um, but it's the intensity that's important uh, on this yeah. and, the, and the low volume. But the time frame is short. And believe me, 
This is advanced, but this is one of the more advanced ways of, of doing this 30 minute workout or less. You do you are taxed afterwards. I mean, 25 minutes and you're done. It feels like you did your hour workout, but you didn't. Well, yeah, because you're basically time. taking every exercise to failure. So you're absolutely yeah. now. This next one is also kind of a bodybuilder inspired short workout. Um, uh, Milo Sarchev, I think what's his last name? Sarchev, I think. He was a bodybuilder in the 90s. Now he's still coaching bodybuilders. He's a big fan of what are called these complexes. And what he does is he'll, or giant sets, he'll take maybe three or four exercises and do them in succession, but they're body part focused and yeah. they're pump focused. So if you only have 30 minutes, this is a great way to bring up a lagging body part. So, mm -hmm. oh, I only got 30 minutes today. You know, my lagging body part is my glutes. Pick four exercises, mix up compound and isolation movements and do one after another for six to eight reps each, heavy. Of course, this is all relative because it's not gonna be very heavy compared to what you normally do because you're doing one after another. But the pump you get from doing this is ridiculous. It's absolutely intense and insane. One of the most uh, uh, crazy pumps I've ever got is doing something like this. So let's build a, an example uh, complex that would look like so we're all on the same page. page. So pick, it at, pick a muscle. So you would do just one muscle in that 30-minute workout? You would. Okay, one muscle and then one four-exercise complex. And then uh, you go back to back to back to back. And then you rest. probably rest after the circuit, right? And then do it again. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. so let's say it's shoulders. Let's say that's your weak body part. Uh, you, I would do overhead press. So the compound first. Yes, yeah. usually, right? So I go overhead press, you know, uh, standing lateral, rear fly. And then maybe at the end, I'll throw another compound in there, but real light, like, a, like an upright row. And then rest. And then do it again. And you do maybe three rounds of that. You're done in literally 20 minutes. Yeah, I would I would part. actually so I did this for a while, something very, very similar to that with clients when I was doing some of these 30 minute sessions. And I was able to get like two muscle groups done like that. Yeah, you could. So you could do sure. I would pick like two, it would be, you know, buys and tries would be my two. I'd do two, uh, four, you well, know. Especially if you're not used to it, man. It, it'll fry that muscle group. Totally. Yeah, yeah. You don't need and I I'll, I'll do this for legs. I, well, honestly, I, minutes, I, I recommend it. I think there's more value in doing it for the big muscle groups. Like I think chest, back, legs, I like doing stuff like this. And I would have the first exercise be like a big movement yeah. and then the other three yeah. smaller movements. It starts to kind of taper off intensity-wise. Yeah, like, I mean, you get a, a, a crazy workout. If you literally did like squats, leg extensions, leg curls, calf raises, and you did a little circuit like that. Oh, you're done. Yeah, yeah, three rounds. Yeah, yeah. And, and the pump is the focus on this. And, and again, bodybuilders used to call this giant sets. You know, Arnold used to do this back in the day. Lots of, like I said, uh, uh, Milo Sarchev does this uh, now with his train with his uh, bodybuilders that he coaches. So, and what does the, the rep range look like for this? And like, I mean, are we going for volume? With ten this, to fifteen right? at yeah, least. Ten to fifteen, it's, or you could do what I what I like to do sometimes is pick heavy. Well, he, again, it's all relative, but I'll do like six to eight reps of each. Because remember, it's a giant. See, so set. if I did that, that's what I what I would do is six to eight reps for the big movement, and then the, and higher, then the, reps. the other higher reps for the other. So right. you, you got one set that you're getting taxed pretty good, like on the squat, that would be six to eight reps. And then I do all those other ones, leg extensions, leg curls, right. calf raises. Those are 10, Well, this is where sometimes now. you'll see people with the quote unquote finishers, like at the end where they're doing like basically to failure, like as many reps, almost like an AMRAP approach at the end. Yes, yes. Now, now this next point I think is real important because- in my experience, people who say they only have 30 minutes or sometimes less, 15 minutes to work out, often have that time every single day. So what I mean by that is they'll say to me, I can't do a full hour workout. I don't have any day of the week where I can dedicate an hour, an hour and a half to working out, but I could definitely do like 20 minutes a day or 30 minutes a day or 15 minutes a day. Mm -hmm. If you do the math, that's like an hour and a half to three, you know, three, three and a half hours a week. So you could literally do an hour, three day a week workout, or you could do 30 minutes, six days a week, and you could split everything up. There's actually way. tremendous yeah. value. It's similar to what you've talked about with splitting it up in a day, right? Mm -hmm. Like there's so much value in even a 15 minute workout done six days a week. Yes. You could make the case that a six day a week, 15 minute workout is better than a three 30 minute or 45 minute workout because yes. you're just doing something every single day. The benefits of what you're going to get energy to for the body rest of just responds better because it's, it's learning these movements frequently Yeah, and it's not something that you're waiting a, a long period of time in between to then reapply and try to add intensity to. It's like, we're just constantly kind of reinforcing that this movement is important. It's also interrupting every single day with some physical, some vigorous physical activity Totally, yeah. where you could easily have, yeah, great, phenomenal 30 minute, 60 minute workout one day. And then the next day you're sedentary all yep. day. Yep. And I would make the argument that 
that that type of person who has a job like that would actually benefit more from 15 minutes on Monday and also 15 minutes on Tuesday than real intense on Monday, nothing on Tuesday whatsoever. There's there's a lot more benefits. Yeah, and you know, it's to, funny. There's there's studies that even hint towards that this might even ha- provide a better physiological yeah. uh, benefit. Like there's studies that compare, you know, like, you know, two 30-minute cardio sessions versus one one-hour one or three or four 15-minute workouts versus one one-hour one. And they've actually find that there's a, it trends towards better results with the more frequent, shorter workouts. Now, I used to do this all the time for new parents, new parent clients. Oh, yeah. This, I would have like people- This is a great hack for Oh, me. yeah. Like moms, you know, like new moms would hire me and oh my God, you know, an hour is impossible. My baby naps for, if I'm lucky for 30, 35 minutes before they got a nurse skin. And I'd say, here's what we're going to do. You're going to do 15 to 20 minutes every single day. And you're going to pick like two exercises and just do it every single day. And the funny thing is when they would do it, they'd come to me and be like, I think I like this better than what I was doing before. It's well, to Justin's really well. point, the adaptation process has to be better because of that, because of the frequency that you're doing mm-hmm. something. And then you got to think also the benefits of the heart rate and calorie burn. Yeah. If you are if you're sedentary and you're almost at a resting heart rate all day long as you sit at a desk and you interrupt that for 15 minutes, you're, you, you're, it takes a while before that heart rate comes all the way back down to its resting. And in, in fact, and I know you guys can attest to this too, I always notice when I create any sort of, this is what I loved about trigger sessions, if I was sitting on the couch and I do this little trigger session workout, I notice that afterwards, I'm now I'm doing dishes. I'm, I'm just, I'm, I want to be more active yeah. subconsciously. It's not like I'm like making myself be more active. It's that I interrupted this, you know, sitting on the couch or sitting at a desk for hours with some sort of activity because I did that. Now I'm more likely to do other physical things mm-hmm. because of that. And that's like one of the behavior benefits that is subconscious that you don't even realize from that. So it's weird. It feels like it's like charging your battery. Like yes, I totally. swear it's like these little like energy chargers, because uh, if you've ever done just a few reps and like got a nice little pump, but then, you know, you can do like a lot more, but then you stop and then you go do something else and then you come back to it. It's like, Oh my God. Like I, it, it's so strange. Like the phenomenon around that. Yeah, and, and we can't overstate the psychological benefit, right? There's a, there's a, a profound, just a like immediate, uh, mood lift. There's this increased production of catecholamines, which is why you feel energized. Dopamine and serotonin tend to rise. You feel better. So daily short workouts versus infrequent longer workouts, in my personal opinion, the psychological benefit, the mood lift, the energy boost, the just just making you feel better in general is better from the the daily short workouts. And this was the feedback that I would get from people. Well, and it's less daunting. I mean, how many times have either you personally or seen clients where there's like, ah, you know, I was going to go work out, but now my time, I don't have, I got hurried or yep. rushed here. I'm late there. I, now I don't have my 60 minute window. And so all of a sudden they just say, no, I'm not going to do anything. It's like, yeah. it's less daunting to know that, oh, I just need to go do this one thing or just 15 minutes. I can squeeze 15 or 30 minutes in. So I think the 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 mental part of that too. Yeah, I advantage. had a guy that I this reminds me of this guy that I used to train who I don't remember what the, what happened exactly, but he this was him. He used to train two or three days a week for an hour, and then it became impossible to do that. And so he bought a pull up bar that he put in his doorway, some resistance bands, a couple adjustable dumbbells, and then he had like this 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 dip station, and he started doing twenty minute workouts every single day. And I would see him every once in a while. I trained this guy like once, maybe twice a month if, if, if it worked. And during our workouts, I'm reevaluating his sessions and what we can do and all that stuff. And he was getting way better results this way. He actually got better. He built more muscle and burned more body fat doing this, uh, this these short 20-minute workouts where he had his, his stuff set up right over there. He would just jump over there, do yeah. some dips, do some pull-ups. Just go get it when you can get it. Totally, totally. Now, this next one I know you guys are, uh, especially you, Justin, are a big fan of. And I started now uh, putting this into my mm-hmm. routine as a permanent thing, which is making that 30-minute time window a mobility focus. Yeah. And, and you can do amazing things in 30 minutes for mobility. And then that improved mobility will contribute so much to all the other workouts you do with greater ranges of motion, better connection, and just getting more out of your workouts. And I think that's yeah. something people tend to neglect. Oh. So oftentimes it's like, I got 30 minutes. I totally mobility. neglected it. That's why I became an evangelist because I didn't realize like how good your body could feel if you really incorporate this into your programming and uh, it, to really just even hyper-focus on it because it's always an afterthought. It's always been a warm up or a cool down. We always kind of know like, yeah, that's probably a good thing to do. Uh, but to really focus on those types of movements that really help the joints to function well, to feel supported, 
um, to, you know, like really address any kind of imbalance or anything going on. Uh, it has massive benefit and carryover to anything else you want to do to build on top of that. So to, to really break it down to, uh, you know, one complete focus of, you know, how I can make my joints, uh, re really challenge, you know, my range of motion and, and, and dive into it. Uh, there's just so much value there. Well, this is, uh, this is the motivation between the webinar I did. This was the motivation behind why I, I stopped doing boot camps and I transitioned into this one day a week mobility flow session that I built for these clients was I, I had this point where I noticed that I, I had mostly advanced age. So most people were 50 and above that I was training. Most of them wanted fat loss, feel better, joint pain, you know, general clients that we would train. Mm -hmm. And I was running them through boot camp style. You know, they were doing the warrior ropes and the ladders and the flipping the tires and like circuit based and running. And like I was doing the things that burned the most amount of calories in the short period of time. And that's the, the, the thought process for me as a trainer back then was, oh, I only have an hour to two hours a week with these people. I'm going to do the things that burn the most amount of calories and hit the most amount of muscles. So I was thinking that's the biggest bang. But as I looked, you know, years later of doing this and I look back at my clients, I'm like, none of their bodies really changed that much. Still complaining about the same aches and pains that they were the first day they met me two years before. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know what, the, even though uh, a mobility hour is not going to build the most muscle, it's not going to burn the most body fat. It is the most beneficial thing I could possibly do for this collective group. It completely changed the way I looked at these sessions. And then later on, I started to get a little older and have the same thing and realize, and it's hard, right? It's hard for especially trainers and young trainers and fit people to recognize that like, okay, yes, the, that type of a session is not going to build the most muscle and burn the most body fat, but you could make the case that is the best thing yeah. that person could possibly need. Mm -hmm. If you have any sort of chronic pain whatsoever or dysfunction or the inability to squat or the inability to overhead press or do things that are very basic and functional, if you can't do those things, this becomes more important than building the most muscle or burning the most body yeah. fat. In 30 and I minutes. think for, for trainers, like the, the difficulty there is like trying, they think that they're trying to have to sell these people on this. Like it's the most boring idea they've ever heard until they actually do it and feel the difference of it and how challenging it could really be. And, and this is something that uh, if you really, you know, take the, the chance to, to apply this and like introduce your clients to that type of training, they'll feel it right away. Changer. The first session. That's yeah. what I love about this. So sure, it won't build as much muscle and burn as much body fat, but believe it or not, that takes weeks of months and consistency and dieting and for that to all pan out anyways, where you could build a session for 30 minutes that's completely focused around mobility and the way they walked in will feel completely different than the way they walk out. Yep. Like talk, if you're a trainer paying it, listening right now, that's a very powerful tool for getting that client to continue and then overall changing their life. And there's which, two things I want to comment on. One is in the moment, it's not building the most muscle and burning the most body that's fat. That's right. But because of what it does for you, it allows right. you to build more muscle and burn more body fat with the other workouts. So they are, when it's, when it's something that benefits you, it does lead to better gains mm -hmm. and better fat loss as well. And then the second point uh, is, here's what's funny. I remember when I started doing this with my clients and I thought, oh, I'm going to have to convince them and mm -hmm. I'm going to have to talk about it. This very quickly became the most requested type of workout. Very yeah. quickly. This is the, the one most requested workout where clients would call me up and be like, hey, Sal, can we do mm -hmm. just mobility focus today because I'm not feeling very good or my back kind of hurts or I'm kind of tired. And, and they love the way they felt. And the proof is literally in the pudding. Like, do this, and then you'll see for yourself just how valuable this is for everything else. When you move better, all your other workouts are more effective. That's literally the bottom Well, line. and to give you an example what that, I mean, I experienced that with my squat depth. Um, because of all the time and energy that I put on my ankle mobility and my hip mobility, sure, I was squatting way less weight, way less as frequent, but when I returned back to squatting and increased my frequency, I was getting way more out of squatting with way less weight and way less frequency because I now increased my depth, let's say six to eight more inches and that greater range of motion ended up building more muscle with less effort. So totally. that's where that carries over into other, other exercises. Totally. Now this last one took me a long time to really understand as a trainer because I never really put a lot of value yeah. into what I'm going to talk about until... I started to really see the value in it with my clients and then it with myself. And that's that sometimes you only have 30 minutes 
do something recreational that's active that you enjoy, like walking or hiking or taking your dog, dog for a walk or doing some stretching outside or some mobility work outside. I remember I had this uh, one lady that I trained. She was a surgeon and she was a high performing, intense, uh, you know, woman. She was phenomenal. One of the best, uh, around. And I loved her. I loved talking to her and listening to her cases and all that stuff. And sometimes she'd have to cancel her sessions because she was on call. Something happened. Oh no, I can't make the full workout. And then when she come in for her next workout, I'd ask her, well, did you, did you end up doing anything? She's like, yeah, I actually just, I went for a 30 minute walk or I did a hike for 25 minutes. She had a trail that was near her house. Mm -hmm. And she said, you know what, Sal? She goes, the, the emotional and mental benefit I get from doing that is so valuable to me that, uh, you know, I thought to myself, I'm wasting my time because I'm not meeting with Sal and training. Right. She's like, but I realized doing this is extremely valuable. I would just be like, oh, I only got 25 minutes. Let me go for a walk outside. And she would tell me, oh my God, I'm so glad I did that. Well, and this kind of pulls it full circle from what we were talking about in the very beginning of like, you know, where it's not about use the trainer all the time. And once you really start to realize like this has, this is something that this client really enjoys. It, it has value because they're moving, they're being active, they're, they're expressing their body, uh, they're getting sunlight, you know, yeah. maybe from hiking or, you know, there's all these other added benefits and psychological benefits, uh, you know, de-stressing benefits uh, to, to this type of a, of, of a mentality. So you want to be able to provide that, like, no, you're not wasting time. This is something that is, you know, a, a great thing to do and, and to focus on if you only have 30 minutes. I always feel like a, an old man now when I talk about how much <laughs> yeah. I love this, this strategy because it's, know. it's so opposite of it how replace I, old with wise. That's really wise. what it is. It's wisdom. There you it, go. It, and it, and it's so true. What you're saying, Justin, is that you, it's such an easy place to meet your client because it's, it's not they're either one, they're doing something they already love swimming, hiking stuff that they're into. So you're not asking for a big commitment or even if it's just going for a nice little walk or hike outside, it's not really strenuous. You don't need a ton of energy to get the oomph to get up and do that. So it's an incredible way to build momentum for a client to eventually come back to you and say, Hey, you know what? I know I told you I only have 30 minutes, but I now have more time. And that's what you see happens when you meet a client to where, where they're at and you start with stuff like this, even though we're not, again, building the most muscle you possibly can in 30 minutes or burning the most body fat. It's the psychological piece. It's the behavioral piece that we're attacking with doing something like this. And if you can convince these clients that there's tremendous value in them just getting out there and at least moving for 30 minutes a day like that or three times a week, it's a great place to start a lot of people and then eventually build the rest. Yes. And I mean, there's a there's a lot of different ways uh, to utilize this to gain value. Um, you can even meditate. You know, I think the point of this last one is literally that something is better than nothing and to not get into the mentality of, oh, crap, you know, my time got away from me. I've only got 25 minutes. I guess I'm going to do nothing. Yeah. You can do something and it in 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 this case do something that you enjoy that involves your health. Which meditation does that as well. I actually had a client that used to do that. Yeah. She would have 20 minutes and I'd say, you know, why not practice meditation? She was obviously a very high stress individual and she's like I saw I, so much value. I would just meditate mm -hmm. for 15 or 20 minutes and get tremendous. So the key here is you've got a little bit of time do something for your health within that time that you enjoy, right? Something that you enjoy. And by the way, doing things that you enjoy because you enjoy them, that alone has got value. There's a lot of value in doing 25 minutes of something that you enjoy doing that is good for your health. And it really, in this case, kind of doesn't matter what it is so long as it positively impacts your health. Well, and in a perfect world, we literally take all of these. We take all of these and we blend it in a, over the course of a you know month or two months totally. time. I mean, there's so much value in each one of these that if I am if I'm restricted as a trainer, where a client says, "Hey, I've only got 30 minutes, three, four times a week. That's all I got." I'm not going to just gravitate towards one of these things. I'm going to incorporate all of them because they all have their own own benefits and carry over to whatever their goals may in be. In fact, you will get better results if you do it that way. Not just physically, but that's true. You'll get physically better results, but psychologically and mentally, you'll get better results. If you just hammer one of these every single time you work out, it tends to get stale. The body stops to respond. And we we said this earlier in this episode, the one that people tend to gravitate towards, especially the, the, the results-oriented people, is the most intense one that we talked about, which was probably hit. So like, all right, 30 minutes of hit every single time I work out. Yeah. Your body adapts very quickly and it starts to pr produce too much stress on the body. 
and you stop getting results. So of all these things that we just talked about, if you're one of those people where you often run into this problem where you only have 30 minutes to work out, go down the list each time. In fact, I recommend you have a list in front of you of all these things that we talked about. And I'll, I'll go through them right now. There's a single focus, like the one or two exercises. There's HIT style training. There's that heavy duty or blood and guts. kind. Of, I said that Mike Menser, Dorian Yates style, style workout. There's that body part focused complex, right? Where you do three or four exercises just for a body part to get a crazy pump. Uh, you also don't forget you can do 15 minute workouts every single day or 30 minute workouts every single day and get that value. You could do a mobility session or you could just do something you enjoy. Go down the list of all of these each time you have limited time. And what you'll find is you'll get excellent results. You'll get the gains that you're looking for. You'll get the fat loss that you're looking for. And you'll be surprised. Keep that momentum going You strong. will be surprised at how great your results are. Look, if you like our information, you'll love mindpumpfree.com. So head over there, check out all of our free guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any fitness or health goal. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So Justin is at mindpumpjustin. I'm at mindpumpsal. And Adam is at mindpumpadam. 